Hi everyone, so this little video will be about how much uh, pianists, great famous pianists or other pianists, how much they practice a day. And actually the reason is also many people ask me this in, on uh, when I do lives or something, people ask me how much I'm practicing, how much I think they should practice. And I think it's interesting, I think, a uh, subject actually, if you, I did some research on um, biographies, internet, um, uh, forums, and uh, actually also can share some information I know from colleagues I have, so people who uh, have a great concert career and who told me how much they are practicing in real time, or pianists I met and who told me how much they are practicing. So I will start with Xifra. Um, actually, I made a small video on how much Xifra was practicing, and there is a documentary where he's really talking about how much he is practicing. He said he was practicing in, his, in the peak of his career, so also keep in mind, you never practice your whole life the same amount of hours, right? If you are a beginner, if you are a kid and you start piano, you probably do 15 minutes a day, then two years later you do half an hour a day and then you increase like this. When you study, you do probably like four, six hours a day or more. And then when you have a um, very demanding career or depending depending which program you have to prepare, you will practice more than if you have a repertoire you know and you have to practice less because you know the repertoire for many years and you keep playing this stuff. So it's also very relative to what you practice, how much you play in concert, etc. But Xifra, to have a concrete example, was doing a lot of concerts in um, his mid-life time and he practiced between 8 and 10 hours a day, basically the whole day. He said he was a kind of slave of the piano because he was also doing practicing and then concerts and then practicing and probably probably busy with this the whole time and I tried this once to do this 8-10 hours a day and you just realize this takes your whole day because including the breaks you need in between eating, making, a, go, you know, going for a coffee or to the toilet actually it takes your whole day and after 10 hours you are so tired that you actually go for you actually go sleep you don't do something else after so Xifra plus practicing 8-10 to 10 hours a day and it's probably one of the one of the pianists I heard who practiced the most. But I found some other one, actually, Zimmerman, very interesting topic. Um, I once went, when I was a student uh, in Brussels Conservatory, I went to one of his concerts in Palais des Beaux-Arts, it's a big concert hall there, and I didn't meet him, but a friend of mine waited until the end to meet him, and uh, one of uh, these friends was asking him how much he was practicing, and he said when he was young he practiced 16 hours a day. No, not so much anymore, he said. Um, and I think that's totally possible because Zimmerman apparently also heard lately in an interview he was saying that as a kid he was practicing piano until four in the morning and his mother was telling him he should go to bed because he has school next day. So he apparently is a very obsessive person when he practiced and he needed to play, for example, Rachmaninoff 2. When he finished playing it, he needed to play it again. So like this time goes past very quickly because it needs 40 minutes already to play it once. So if you play three, four times in a row, it's already like two, three hours um, over, right? And then apparently he's also very new, uh, very um, interested in discovering new pieces. So he's always reading and discovering new pieces, playing them at the piano. So this takes a lot of hours too. And he seems to be a night person. So he's probably sometimes spending the whole night practicing or recording or this kind of stuff. Now, I believe now he practices a bit less and I think that's the same for most of pianists. When you have a career, when you play concerts since you are 15 until you are, let's say, 40, 50, you play the pieces so much that you don't probably, I'm not sure because I don't have this experience, but you don't need so much practice anymore like you would need before. Also, you get older, you get tired, uh, and then probably you reduce your hours because you don't need so much anymore. I have a good example of a colleague that I actually studied with him. He has a good concert career, he's doing a lot of concerts and he's living in Brussels, we had the same teacher. And he tells in a small documentary too actually that he's practicing eight hours a day. Uh, and the same, like he, he's a, I know because I once invited him to play in Zurich and I, we discussed about how we practice and everything. He's also very obsessive, like he's putting, he said he was putting before, now he changes a finger on every note to fix the fingering like 100% that there is no doubt about. So only putting fingerings can take hours and yeah, then you, you understand why you practice hours, right? Because then you're also practicing slow, practicing middle tempo, analyzing the works, uh, practicing without piano. This all takes a lot of time and you can fill a whole day with this practicing, right? I had also not another colleague, a Japanese uh, girl at the conservatory, she also told me once, because at that time I was practicing when I was studying two, three hours a day, I was a bit lazy. And then I asked her how much she was practicing and she said she's doing eight hours. I was really shocked. I thought like, wow, she's doing eight hours. I need to do more. <laughs> so, yeah. Then actually Richter, Sjatoslav Richter, the 
Russian pianist, um, when people are, I read this on the internet, when people asked him how much he was practicing, he said not much, not never more than four hours. But then apparently friends and colleagues were laughing about this because they said he was practicing all day non-stop. So that's another thing I wanted to talk about, like not every pianist are or pianists are not always aware of how much they practice. Like some people are just busy doing music, music all the time or thinking about music all the time and they think about practicing where they are just pressing notes or doing... They don't see a concert, for example, as practicing, but actually it's kind of practicing too. Horowitz was saying he was practicing in, in concerts uh, only at the end of his career. So Richter, I don't know how much he was aware of this or there's this other thing, of course, I guess if you are a famous pianist, you get compared to other famous pianists and then you probably don't want to, depends on the character you are, but maybe some people feel, oh, I don't want to, to I don't want to be the, the one who practiced the most because maybe they will say I don't have so much results and I practice so much. So maybe there's a kind of shyness or uh, afraid to be less or more than another colleague who is uh, competing with you. And then maybe some people, of course, it's, it sounds better if you say, oh, I practice on only two hours a day and I'm, I'm an amazing pianist than if I practice 20 hours a day and I get uh, medium results, right? So there must be something about this too that people prefer to say they don't practice so much. I don't know. So Richter said he practiced four hours, but actually he practiced probably more. And he also said, like, depends if I have to prepare a new work, I practice all day until I know the work. And if I have a program that I know, I don't need to practice so much anymore. Lang Lang apparently was quite open about this too in his book about his childhood and he practiced as a child six hours a day uh, not probably at the very beginning but then once he was like a certain level of practicing three hours in the morning before school and three hours in the evening after school uh, so that's a lot for a child but uh, you can see the results he was giving and then apparently now he's still practicing around four hours a day and he says he really enjoyed practicing so uh, it's something he likes to do and he's probably doing many concerts a week so that's also like many hours of playing and then you reflect on your playing and you practice a bit try to perfect but that the, the playing is actually two hours of playing piano so if you have a concert it's more or less two hours it's two hours playing piano so you can kind of include this in your practicing so he would do probably four hours a day and two hours concerts to mix also again six hours I read about Kissin that he was doing four hours a day no I don't have so much information about this but um, he seems to be quite practicing not so much. Also, I, I remember Helen Grimaud saying you should not practice more than two hours a day and she was doing two hours a day and it's enough. Now again, I have to say, did they really, do they count thinking about the music, practicing without piano, you know, imagining what, how you want to play a piece, this is kind of practicing too, do they count this or not? And do they really measure how much you practice? Because when I did this experiment of practicing 10 hours a day, uh, I had to measure it and then I realized when you start measuring how much you practice you realize your perception of what you practice practice how long you practice is not the same as what you actually do so most typically you, th you think you did one hour and actually you did only 40 minutes for example or sometimes opposite you did you thought you did two hours and you did only 10 minutes um, oh sorry yeah so Another thing uh, people write about this, Chopin apparently said, and there I think you should be careful because some biographies are not so accurate and there is a lot of legends about composers of the past. Apparently he said you should not, he said to his students, you should not practice more than two hours a day. And that's very little two hours a day. I, I'm not sure many people manage to have a really good level and top career. No, careful, I'm talking about professional pianists. Like, of course, people who has a job, and practice two hours a day, that's a lot. But for a concert pianist who is doing only concerts, two hours a day is not so much. Again, for a pianist who is also teaching like me, for example, I'm busy with some other stuff, so practicing two hours a day fills my days, right? And then maybe two hours is a lot. But to have a top level, two hours a day, I think is not so much. Maybe some men is doing it, I don't know. Chopin said this, I'm not so sure he really said this. Maybe he said this for some students, I don't know. Because when I read, uh, when I was, I did a video also on Chopin habit, how he worked, how his day was working, and he was basically he was waking up late, so maybe ten, nine or ten in the morning, but then he was composing all day long and composing at the piano. So do you count this as practicing? I think you do, right? It's kind of practicing. Like if you're a composer, you don't need to practice so much to perform. I mean, at least Chopin, because he didn't perform so much. He may be maybe 10 concerts in his late life, so he didn't perform so much. 
Now there's another example I will come there just after, yeah, Liszt. Um, Liszt was a composer, but performed a lot. So he was practicing a lot probably to perform, and actually he was suffering more of the opposite thing. He had, didn't have so much time to compose. And Rachmaninoff had the same trouble. He also split his day. I also did a video on Rachmaninoff habits. He split his day and he tried to practice at least two hours a day because the rest of the time he wanted to dedicate it to composition. Again, this is also at the piano sometimes, so maybe it's a bit practicing too, I don't know. Um, so the example of Liszt is interesting too because it's also one of the best pianists that ever lived, so it's a good example to take always, I think. He, we know, he was practicing for sure four or five hours a day, only exercise, so he don't talk about practicing pieces, right? And probably he was also practicing pieces after this four or five hours, four, five hours exercise. Or maybe it was a period where he was focused just on exercise, but I'm not sure if you can do this. I also tried this, by the way, like there is another video, a promotion of videos today. There is another video where I try to practice four hours exercise a day. And that's feasible, it's not that difficult. Um, you still have time after actually to practice other pieces. So Liszt for sure practiced a lot in his childhood. And then when he has his very busy concert career, he pr probably practiced almost nothing or not at all. I don't know. He had a small keyboard that he had in his carriage to when he was traveling to warm up his fingers. But um, there is letters of Schumann, for example, who spent one or two weeks with Liszt touring. And he said he didn't see the man practice and his concerts were just exceptional and he had different programs every concert. So he was astonished how he could manage to have such a high, high level of performing with never seeing him practicing. Because also at that time you needed a lot of, a lot of time to travel from one place to the, other, to the other because there was no train, there was no car. So there was a carriage and this took a lot of time if you wanted to go to the next city, for example and no piano, right? So most of the time also, that's what Schumann is describing, Liszt just arrived before the concert at the concert place, jumped into the concert hall, performed, and then went to the hotel sleep and left next day or something like this. So I had basically almost no time to practice, but he practiced so much, I'm sure, when he was young, and he was such a gifted pianist, maybe he didn't need to practice so much, or he was practicing a lot mentally. I remember also reading Daniel Barenboim practiced mentally in the plane and learned a piano concerto of Mozart in the plane without piano. I don't know. Could be possible. Um, Horowitz, good example. Horowitz, I'm sure, um, I think I read this in his biography, but I'm not so sure anymore. He practiced a lot when he was young, that's for sure. He did like tons of hours. Uh, also, you can hear it in the way he's playing when he's young, like it's just uh, electric. It's amazing. Now, when he was old, he had two big crises, uh, probably a kind of burnout because he was doing too much, con too many concerts and practicing too much, and there was always more expected from him. So he had these two big long burnouts where he didn't play, perform. Probably he practiced piano, and there's a video where you can see he practices uh, a bit on his piano, and he said, "Oh, I had a long practice today," and then his wife is saying. Most of the time he practiced 15 minutes and then he comes to me and said like, oh, I practiced it a lot today, I practiced two hours. And she said, no, you did just 15 minutes. So there again, the perception of how much you practice can be different, right? But And probably he could afford doing this again because he practiced so much and performed so much as a, as a child that you have these works and he kept playing the same works that he played before. So it's, once you know a work over and over and you played it 200 times, you don't need so much practice anymore to keep it alive. Um, and that's probably why he was keeping the works he knew very well, practicing very little to keep them in a good shape and then performing them with some mistakes at the end because he didn't care so much anymore. But he was more improvising on concert and, and he, he was able to just uh, invent a piece or to bring the music just without a lot of practicing because it was all also in his head and his fingers from before. Um, another strange example is Gould, Glenn Gould. He apparently, so I read this, uh, practiced no, not, he didn't like practice, so he didn't practice more than one, two hours a day. But there again, I saw a documentary and you see, in the documentary you see him kind of practicing all the time because he's always alone with his dog and he's walking. Now again, he's walking and probably singing the pieces in his head, so that's a kind of practicing too, but mentally without piano. and. Maybe the digital practicing on the keyboard, he was not doing so much, but I'm not sure of this. I'm sure he was probably doing more than, than he pretended. And then I once met a wonderful pianist, a French pianist, Franck Bralet, who won the Queen Elizabeth competition. Um, I had a masterclass with him and I talked with people who 
knew him, who saw him there because he was uh, in residence with an orchestra. And they told me he is basically practicing all the time. And uh, there was a free piano in the orchestra room. And he was, uh, when before the concert and when the program needed to be done, he was practicing all the time. So, again, um, I think most of pianists are busy with music all the time. Now, it's not always practicing at the piano, it can be practicing aside. But I think basically what we saw there, if you have a very high level career and you have a lot of different concerts to prepare, means a lot of different programs that you need to remember or to put back even if you didn't play it for two weeks probably you need to bring it back and to practice it a bit and to revisit it if see if, if everything is still working and sometimes you want to improve some stuff so this takes I think all all your day yeah if you have uh, time for this and another last example is Volodos uh, he's a bit a mis mysterious guy incredible level of course and he says he do he's doing sometimes intensive tours and then after that he needs two weeks of not touching the piano he's always walking eating enjoying life and not touching the piano and he also said something very strange he said um he don't practice the piece until the last moment but before this to prepare the piece he's improvising a lot in the style of the composer he's wanting to play because he says if you practice too much a piece you kind of make it mechanical and you destroy a bit the piece which again, I I'm not sure either he's an exception and he's such a genius at the piano that he can do this kind of stuff. I don't know many people who can do this. I cannot do this. Or it's a bit exaggerating or it's a bit for the legend. I don't know. Or maybe it's true, but then it's like it's really uh, astonishing. So I hope I answered the questions of many people of how much you should practice. I think the, the short answer is as much as you can or as much as you need. Now, if you practice one hour and everything is perfect, well, good for you, then you need one hour a day. But that's not the case, even for very talented pianists like Sifra and everything, they practiced many hours, even if they were like very talented and practiced so many hours since very little. So I think that's the short answer. Hope I helped you. Um, thank you for watching the video and go have a look to the other videos where I'm making these practice experiments. Let me know in the comments what you think about and see you next video.